I am, first of all, so excited to be back. Um, is this not an amazing venue? I mean, how many people go to conferences, and this is just such a gorgeous, inspirational venue. So, Delight is by far my most favorite conference and event that I attend. I feel like I'm sort of part of a crowd with kindred spirits. Um, everybody in this room, the fact that you even come to a conference that talks about delight says something about you. Uh, it says something that you're investing your time uh, and your resources to come here. And for me, it's kind of evident when you talk to people that um, it deeply matters to bring delight. And I love what you just uh, showed up on stage about joy versus delight. Uh, how many people are familiar with Kimpton? Yes. Usually, usually we get Clinton. What? Uh, we have 63 um, boutique hotels, but they're all individually branded. Um, and so the reason that we sometimes don't always have awareness uh, is because we have unique individual hotels. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what we do. And if you've heard about what makes Kimpton different, um, we'll talk a little bit about that. But primarily, I wanted to talk about the fact that Delight is not a campaign. Um, so Harvard came out with a study that said surprise is still the most powerful marketing tool. Does the word out there, the word tool? It's kind of an interesting choice of words. And then they went on to say that surprise is like crack for the brain. And it's interesting when you actually take a look at what surprise is. Um, are you guys familiar with a study by Emory University about the role of dopamine on the brain? Can I see a roll of hands? Sort of. So dopamine is responsible for everything from sort of sex, drugs, and rock and roll and everything that we think is pleasurable. It's a neurotransmitter that gets kind of fired when we get delighted. And so I want to quote this study, but I have to be a little bit careful with my choice of language because my team said they, they dared me to quote the study exactly. The way it went, that they, they sent a bunch of people into an MRI, and um, they had a little tube that uh, squirted liquid into their mouths. I'm like, that's an interesting choice of words. Uh, they squirted either water or juice into uh, the subjects. And what was interesting was, depending on if you got the water or the juice, depending on what you expected, uh, if you got the unexpected, your brain lit up, the dopamine receptors in your brain lit up like a Christmas tree when you got the unexpected. So dopamine is actually responsible for surprise. So think about the fact that when you guys get, how, how many, let me see a show of hands in the room, how many people get excited when they get a birthday present? How many people are like, happy? Come on, really? <laughs> Don't lie. So it's interesting that you guys said you're surprised, because oftentimes for your birthday, you sort of expect a birthday present, right? You're like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, it's lovely. It's lovely to get a birthday present. But are you surprised? Not necessarily, because it's your birthday. However, let's say that you just walk into your office on a random Tuesday morning and that exact same gift is sitting on your table. Are you surprised? Yeah. And very likely your brain is going to have a totally different reaction than on your birthday. So as brands, as marketers, as designers, as, as you all in here architecting experiences, it's about that unexpected. Find that unexpected thing that triggers people because that is what's responsible. So let's talk about this for a moment. Um, I, I did notice that there's a lot of um, designers in the room, a lot of people who architect experiences. So it was a random day, and I said to my team, uh, let's order lunch. And we all know that there's a million apps for ordering lunch, right? And you're like, what do I do? Do I go with Grub? Do I go with this? I went with Eat24. Anybody heard of Eat24? You will after this. This is awesome. So I downloaded the app. First thing I do is I'm searching. I get my search screen. Refrying beans. And then I'm like, hmm. So I like pressed refreshed a couple of times. And it's not just refrying beans. They were shaking martinis. They were doing all kinds of things. They had probably 100 of these search results. So then I'm like, OK, this is cool. So I decided I'm going to send out the link to my team. And I say, hey, hey, you guys, I've picked this restaurant. Let's go ahead and order lunch. As I'm waiting for them to order, the screen pops up. Eileen, who's here in the audience with me, she was herding cats, uh, but she was still in the process of ordering. Allison was hiding socks. Susan was texting with Beyonce. Uh, Cougar Lady uh, is contemplating cupcakes, etc. cetera. And, and it went on and on as the progress went on. So now I'm intrigued. Now I'm like, this is really cool, because clearly there's a, there's a theme here with Eat24. 
So then um, I went to their website. And up comes this tweet that says, I'm ordering food with Eat24 because I'm an adult. Uh, I do what I want. But I need one of you to come over and cut my meat. Then I go on and uh, they inspire you to sign up for their email. And it says, want coupons? Love notes. Deep thoughts about bacon. I love bacon. Who doesn't love bacon? Get our weekly email. But it didn't end there. So then I go to their tweet stream. So by now, if you're looking at user design, now I've probably spent a good 20 minutes on their website. And I mean, that's pretty hard in today's world. It's a hard thing to get somebody's attention for that long. But they put these little, little teasers. I just want to know more about their brand. Um, if at the very bottom you see, we don't mind you playing the field as long as you remember who really brings home the bacon. So there's a sense of humor. There's that sense of irreverence. So I ended up saying, I had a killer experience. Thank you guys so much. Uh, and they responded with an animated GIF that took a bow. And it was this incredibly fun experience with a food ordering app, uh, which doesn't necessarily speak to uh, fun or delight, but they made it delightful because they had that humor throughout every touch point. So let's talk a little bit about campaign versus culture. Who in the room have heard about uh, Burger King's Whopper campaign? A few. Fun? Do you guys like it? So the notion was you would sacrifice a Facebook friend and get free Whoppers. It's good, it's good, right? I mean, it was funny. So it was this whole, they, they spent a lot, of, they invested a lot of money into it, it became really uh, a big deal. But, and, and you could keep track of how many friends you had unfriended, and then some friends would get pissed off, and you'd just get more Whoppers, and on and on it went. Great campaign, great campaign. That had a lot of surprise and a lot of delight. But then you go to Burger King, you go to the drive through window, and you get a, perhaps a, a, an employee that perhaps wasn't so happy about getting up at 4 AM. That experience may not be as delightful. So my whole point is that here, super cool campaign. And there have been many, many other instances where brands have done cool campaigns. But then let's look at when, campaign, when surprise and delight is not a campaign. Who in the room flies JetBlue? Oh, good. Usually on this coast, we don't get as many. So my friend Marty, uh, up here in the glasses, he's the COO for JetBlue. Um, JetBlue is a great brand when you talk about surprise and delights, where who, they just live, eat, and breathe this stuff. From every single touch point, from their user experience to the, to the plane. I recently was um, traveling with, with my two little kids, and I was just kind of harried, and I just got on board, and I was just annoyed and frustrated. And the flight attendant slips me a little bottle of wine, and she says, you look like you could use this. I went in the bathroom and drank it right away. Um, that, that's just sort of that example of they just embody it. So Marty, uh, again, C-suite, he loves to show up at JFK. This is the terminal uh, at JFK for JetBlue. He loves to just show up, and he does random trivia at the gates. And he says, who in the room can guess uh, how many tons of fuel are on that plane? The person who comes the closest gets a free round trip ticket. Cool, right? Who does that? I've worked for an airline. Uh, it's not, <laughs> delight is not easy to deliver as an airline person. Um, but, but, but JetBlue does this. But it doesn't sort of end there. These could be a lot of tactics um, in person. Uh, JetBlue also sort of continues. So this one person was absolutely obsessed with the JFK terminal um, when it was new. And they tweeted, I want to make love to the JetBlue terminal. Very quickly, JetBlue uh, tweets back, I hope you buy the terminal dinner first. It's good, it's good. This is part of their DNA. It's just simply, and, and it starts at the top, where they simply cascade this down, and they're saying, make people smile. That is the trick. Whether it's a food app, or an airline, or a hotel, or a financial services company. I often have people tell me, I work for insurance, I work for financial services. It's not as easy. You guys are a boutique hotel company. It's easy to make weary travelers happy. Well, one of our team members just had an experience with Citibank where she um, went to buy some artisanal chocolates and her card got declined. Fun? It's that embarrassing moment where you're like, I swear to God, I paid my bill. Um, what do they do? So, you know, they quickly apologized and a few days later in her inbox, in her mailbox at home, a little artisanal box of chocolate shows up along with a little apology note from Citibank. That was powerful. That was unexpected. And so it doesn't matter what industry. We're talking about the right thing to do. So I want to tell you a little Kimpton story. Um, 
And it's just one story, but it's part of, I think, what, what makes Kimpton different uh, and special. We um, had a reservation agent in Canada who took a call um, from a woman who said, I am coming to San Francisco to stay with you, uh, and I need to uh, order a hypoallergenic room. Um, on my bucket list, I've always wanted to go to San Francisco to whale watch. It's, it's something that I've always wanted to do. But unfortunately, this time I can't come for that reason. I am coming because I'm ill. I'm very, very ill. I'm coming in for treatment, and I, um, I need a hypoallergenic room. The agent you know, listened um, and, and took notes and said, we've got that covered. Don't worry about it, and hung up the phone. In many other instances, it would have ended there. The agent would have just made some notes, ordered a hypoallergenic room. But instead, they called the hotel because, again, this is part of our culture, and gave the hotel the full story, exactly as told to them. The hotel and their staff sprung into action, and when she arrived um, at the hotel in San Francisco, they had upgraded her to a beautiful suite that was also a hypoallergenic suite. They had a handwritten welcome card from every, that was signed by every hotel employee. And it said, we can't wait to welcome you back for when you go whale watching. In the meantime, let this tie you over. And on her bed was a stuffed whale. And she wrote a letter to our CEO later and said that I carried that whale with me into the uh, hospital. They had to take it from me because it wasn't, it wasn't surgically correct to bring it into the, the surgery room. But she brought that with her. And she said, I credit your employees for pulling me through. I had that whale watching experience to look forward to. And it's an, ex it's an example of then our CEO lauded you know, the employees and just said, this is amazing. This is amazing. And we just have to keep doing this because it's that connection. Delight can go into that direction or it can go into many other directions. It can go, I mean, depending on what you as brands, whether you're an athletic apparel brand or you're a financial services or you are uh, a startup tech, it doesn't matter. It can go in many, many different directions. Uh, one of our brand new hotels uh, in North Carolina lit up um, the top of it. This is the Winston-Salem uh, Tower. It's a very old building uh, for pride. They lit up their building. Uh, with pride colors. And if you know anything about North Carolina history, that was, at that time, uh, this year, a pretty, you know, pretty strong statement. Um, up here in Portland, all of our Portland hotels, they sleep with the best. Um, and it's, we're a very, very big part of the LGBTQ community, um, and we are very proud of that. But it can also be something so simple that every single person in this room can do. It can be a handwritten note. Our social media team loves sending handwritten notes to some of our inner circle and other members just because, in this particular case, it was um, a Valentine's Day card that just said, we're thinking about you, thank you. Simple, not expensive. Or in the other case, at the Onyx in Boston, this was happy hour, it was wine hour. And uh, it was the fin uh, final episode of Game of Thrones. Any Game of Thrones? <laughs> yeah, go Sansa. Um, and that's what they celebrated here. So they just added a little twist in here. It was that, that final episode. And so they had a, you know, Ned Stark, and they had the pizza with all the different houses. It's about having fun and bringing that sense of delight. So delight really creates loyalty to your brand, whether that is Citibank or JetBlue or anything that we've talked about. But it creates these brand evangelists. So for Kimpton, when you sign up for us, when you go into our login screens, again, talking about how weaving it through the entire experience, um, this one guest said, if I wasn't working, I'd be dreaming of Channing Tatum. Later, under special request, she says, no, seriously, I really love Channing Tatum. So as we get in on the fun, she walked into her hotel room. There was a life-size cutout of Channing Tatum waiting in her room. Because our hotels get in on the fun, and it's part of our culture where, where we learn that if we learn something personal about our guests, we're going to act on it. So you've heard me just tell some stories. And I think it'd be different if I was up here just showing you slide after slide after slide of why surprise and why delight. But I find that stories bring them to life. We can read about surprise and delight. We can read about dopamine. We can read about all these things. But unless we all become storytellers, it doesn't matter. I read a million articles sometimes, and I'm like, that's nice. But it's not until I hear stories about them that things change. So how can we get started? I just wanted to leave you with a few things that I've learned. And, and I've learned from both my team uh, who are here today, and I've learned from being at Kimpton. 
So I get a lot, a lot um, of comments such as, delight is cute, but it's not scalable. I hear that a lot. Anybody else ever heard that? I get that a lot. It's not scalable. When, when you grow and grow and grow and you have a massive, massive team uh, or a big company, um, it's not scalable. But, but who says? So I'm going to just leave you with, with one final little story of a Tibetan monk who was walking on a beach. And it was um, low tide, so there were a thousand uh, starfish laying on a beach. And he was going and picked up one by one by one and threw it back in the ocean. And somebody said, you can't save every starfish, what are you doing? And he goes, no, I can't, but I saved that one. I saved that one, it mattered to that one. And so it starts with one. It starts with whether that is the employee sitting in the cube next to you, or in the office next to you, or the person next to you at Starbucks, or whatever it is. It starts with one, and it starts with you. I think oftentimes we can blame, uh, I come from very large companies, where it's, oh, I can't do that, I'm so-and-so, or my C-suite doesn't, doesn't um, support this. But it starts with you, and it starts today. So ask yourselves, what are you going to do today? Whether it's to the person sitting next to you, or when you're in the coffee line. Engage your leadership in conversation. Uh, if you are in a brand, and my sense is that if you're here, you may not have this challenge, but other brands do, where the leadership may not be as uh, happy about a surprise and delight campaign versus a performance marketing campaign that drives hard ROI. But start the conversations, and it goes back to the storytelling. Whether you tell the Tibetan monk story, or whether you tell the JetBlue stories, or whether you tell that Citibank story, start sharing those stories because they're gonna impact anybody, C-suite or not, but start to talk about it in your meetings. Um, I love to hear from other speakers who do it well. I called up my friend Marty at JetBlue before this and I just said, give me, you know, what are you guys doing to drive it in, in your culture? Invite speakers from other brands. I happen to live in San Francisco or have an office where we have so many inspiring brands and we just invite them in to talk, share, learn from one another. Tap into what motivates your leadership team. This one's also a really big one. Um, I was listening, listening to somebody talking about Charles Schwab who didn't believe um, in uh, social media until he learned that Fidelity had 100,000 more followers. <laughs> Suddenly he was very interested in social media. So it's just learning about what motivates the, the leadership team to get that support. And then publish and socialize small successes. Small wins matter. And when people start hearing you evangelizing about these stories or the small wins, it starts kind of creating a buzz. And that's what we want, which is so cool about this conference. I feel like this, is, this creates buzz. And I often hear about, what's this delight conference? Start sharing the small wins. And then last but not least, invite feedback from your customers. Be open. Sometimes we're afraid of asking for feedback because we're afraid of what we'll learn. Trust me, I, I should know. I host focus groups for Kimpton a lot. Everybody wants free breakfast, free parking, et cetera, et cetera. I can't always give that. But in the meantime, I also learn other little nuggets uh, of things that we can learn. So invite feedback. Just say, how can we delight you? Um, and I think that being open-minded to that makes a huge difference. So that is it for me. I am out of time, but I could talk about this forever. Uh, so to Dave and, and Jeff and all of you, thank you for having me. Thank you.